This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Coming up, we've got a service call and an exhaust fan, and uh, this is what I have to deal with. Kind of climb through this maze of stuff to get up here. Fun stuff. All right, so today I'm told that their dishwasher exhaust fan is not working properly. So we're gonna come over and try to find their dishwasher exhaust fan. Looks like uh, some nice grease buildup. Grease trap is overflowing. We'll have to let their facilities department know about that. That's dangerous. This fan is full of it too. Look in there. Wow, that's not good. Okay. Um, so knowing their location, this, I don't know what this fan controls, but that is their dish fan right there. It looks like it's all taken apart, but it's running. That's weird. And then they have another fan right there. So I'm going to have to dig into this and figure out which fan is what. We have two fans here. This one I opened up actually has no power, <laughs> no power going to it. Look at, there's no wires coming up. You've got a motor wire and that's it. It looks like at one point it was running, but someone disconnected power to it, so that's interesting. But this one, again, I haven't gone downstairs, I believe is their dish fan, and it's running right now. It's all rusty, that's indicative of a dishwasher exhaust. Um, motor's rather hot. Sounds like the motor has bad bearings, too. Very interesting. You can see cobwebs all in here, too, which kind of makes you think it hasn't been working, but all of a sudden it is. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start getting some information off the motor, checking it out, taking some amp draws. So I heard a funky bearing noise, and what I did was I pulled the belt off and listened to that. So we definitely have bad bearings or bearings going bad in the motor. But again, they said it wasn't running at all, but the fan's running. Now judging from the shape of the rust and everything, I need to get a look at that duct work. And I tried to hinge this fan and the whole curb came off. It's not bolted down right here. So I tried to hinge it, because you see there's a hinge kit right there. And I can't get it to break free. It's like the fan is too small for the curb and it's like really jammed on there. And if you look at it, you can tell that this piece right here is bent out because someone shoved it down on there. So I'm not gonna get it off. Plus, I'd have to throw some screws in the bottom. So um, I'm gonna get some specs off the fan and take some amp readings. And then I wanna go investigate that duct work downstairs. Because again, the customer's saying they've got no airflow from this fan. Very strange. Before I can take a motor amp rating, we gotta get that belt tightened up. It's too loose and it's broken, but I'm gonna tighten it up for now. It's got a crack in it somewhere, so I can show it to you guys. Maybe it's on the other side, but it's just all wobbly. Um, so we're gonna loosen up the motor brackets right here. I always keep a ratchet wrench. Works good for these. We can usually get in here. There you go. Just loosen these guys up. Loosen this guy up, and then we'll get a uh, some tension put on this guy and tighten him back up, and then we'll test uh, motor amperage. So this one has a um, three-phase power switch. Believe it or not, this is a three-phase fan. I was kind of taken back by that. Usually they're a little 115 volt dishwasher exhaust, but this one's a three phase. But we have a three phase power switch and there's really no slack in there. And I'd have to pull the whole switch out, which I can do. But usually what I'll do is just pull the conduit loose right here. Usually there's enough slack in the wire and I can get an amp reading. So on this one, we are currently running 1.93 amps. And the motor right here for, I'll measure the voltage, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be 208, 230. We're allowed to run 3.3 to 3.0. So we're good on our amperage, we're not over amping, but I do know that we got a bearing going bad, but still. So we're just gonna keep going through everything. I'm trying to figure out why the customer would say it wasn't working. So the next step, you know, we're definitely gonna recommend a new motor, but the next step is to go downstairs, look at their dishwasher and look at their exhaust setup down there. I know this restaurant's not 480 volts, but I'm pretty confident it's gonna be a 208 volt circuit. Yeah, 
still five. So yeah, we got proper valve, proper power. Um, being that this is a three-phase fan, this should have a motor starter. So again, I'm just thinking as I'm looking and talking here, I would think if the, the bearing was going out that the motor would go off on overload and it would be a tripped motor starter, but it's not. So if it was something like the motor's locking up, theoretically, unless it doesn't have a motor starter, it should trip a motor starter or a breaker. But who knows? So that's why we're gonna investigate the ductwork. The other thing too is verifying fan rotation. So um, there happens to be a sticker on this guy showing me what the rotation should be right there. But that's the direction that my wheel is spinning. So we're good on that. Fan rotation is good. Um, bearings don't have grease ports, so there's no greasing the bearings. So yeah. So they, they don't have a pair of pants coming down to the hood, which I don't like, or to the fan. Normally, they'll have a duct connection right here and it'll go up and go in, but they don't have that. But we are pulling steam up. Let's see what's going on. Interesting. So I'm just looking for like a fan switch. To, this is a mess back here. I don't do any dishwasher work, but this is a joke. Um, looking for anything, but the one thing I do notice is look right here. There's no curtains in there. Those curtains need to be there because they'll keep the steam in and only allow it out a little bit at a time. I mean, it's still not perfect, but you see how this side has curtains and it helps, it reduces the steam coming out, tries to keep it in, but they need to get those curtains replaced. I believe those curtains should actually come all the way down too, try to trap the steam. Never gonna be perfect. You can actually see that they've been having rust problems for a while. Huh. I pulled the ductwork off here, pulled the fan off, and look at how rusted out this is. But it doesn't look like it's got a hole in it, but I want to know when it makes that turn if there's going to be a hole somewhere. So I really need to get up into the attic. I was able to get up to the ductwork. There's no holes in the ductwork, but it is certainly deteriorated. So maybe we just need to speed up that fan, but I still don't understand. I mean, the belt was a little loose. It's kind of strange. I'm searching for the uh, motor starters and I come across this uh, contactor that says dishwasher exhaust fan, glycol and restroom exhaust fan. And it says 2.40 p.m. when it is uh, like 11 a.m. or something. I don't know, I'll, I'll have to see. Maybe that thing's getting stuck or something like that and not letting the fan come on. If I'm understanding this correctly, this doesn't even have an off time in, uh, set up in it. So I don't know how this timer works. I guess I could read the instructions, but um, I'll read it here in a second. But what I did was I put it into manual mode real quick and then I came over to here. And when I click it off, these two contactors turn off. This is a three phase and this has three phase power. That's 115 volts or a 208 volt because it only has a single phase circuit. What that tells me is, is they don't have a motor starter protecting that motor. So, but the manager says that all the other exhaust fans that that controls were working properly when this one wasn't. So theoretically, I guess it could be a motor overheating. I don't know, this is a weird one. Because it's working fine right now. And I'm gonna go through the instructions, but I don't think this has an off time. This runs all the time, even though the time was incorrect in it. I also love electrical rooms that are full of water. It's always nice too, it makes it nice and comfy when you walk in there. Went ahead and turned off the switch, and what I did was I measured out the drive pulley, and then measured out the motor pulley, or sheave, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and recommend a new motor. I still don't know why it wasn't working though. See, that's what's bothering me. I don't know if there's something else going on, like that contactor's going bad or who knows, but something was causing this to not work. Again, I didn't see it. I'm taking their word for it, but they're saying that all the other exhaust fans were working. If it was the, the timer, then that exhaust fan and then they have another one for the restrooms wouldn't be working and they'd be complaining about those ones, but that supposedly wasn't the case. It's one of those things where I wasn't here, but I'm doing my best to look at everything. I've looked at the ductwork, you know, traced it all the way back, don't see any issues. There's no motor starter to trip. So I'm gonna recommend a new motor based off of the bearings going bad. I'm gonna recommend a new uh, motor pulley, a new drive pulley. Uh, we're gonna have to probably go up in belt size because what I'm probably gonna do is I'm probably gonna speed up this exhaust fan. Being that we're under amping on this motor, 
um, and looking at all the rust on the ceiling. Now, when I do that, I may change the airflow to the building and I may have to adjust their makeup air or something, but we'll address that as the time comes. For now, I'm just gonna try to get this thing up and running and pulling the steam out of the dish area a little bit better. So this is a three inch pulley. I don't have any tools to do any calculations. I'm just gonna kind of wing it. I'm gonna probably pick up a three and a half and a four inch pulley and then uh, we'll start with there and see what we can get out of this thing. We still had quite a bit of room in the motor. What it was I running one something and we're allowed to run 3.3. So what, what we need to know for this motor, um, I'm gonna pull up a screenshot right now of the motor nameplate and we'll go through it. But essentially we need to know voltage, RPM, amperage, frame, uh, pulley sizes, and I'll show that all on the data tag. So I have highlighted the most important things on this motor nameplate, and this is the old nameplate. We need to know the horsepower, the voltage, the RPM, the amp draw, the phase, and the frame, especially paying attention to the amp draw of the old motor and comparing it to the amp draw of the new motor. Very, very important. Came back out today and went ahead and put a new motor. Went ahead and went back with a three quarter horsepower motor. Obviously there's no bearing noise anymore. The fans moving air like crazy. But I want to point something out. So this motor, um, for the FLA we have 2.4 amps, okay? And we are running uh, 200, we're running the lower voltage, so 230. So we're allowed to run 2.4 amps. And we're running right at 2.41, 2.44. Just for the heck of it, I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit. It's probably fine because we do have a safety factor there. What we're gonna do, turn off the power switch. We're gonna wait for it to slow down. And to slow down the fan, we're gonna drop the amp draw. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this pulley, okay? So we're gonna loosen it up, take the belt off, okay? and basically we're gonna open this pulley up. So to do that, all that I'm gonna do is take my Allen wrench, loosen it, loosen it enough to work and turn, okay? And then you're simply gonna open the pulley and I'm gonna go one half turn. That is gonna slow down the exhaust fan. And you will see because the amp draw will draw. Okay, so we're just gonna tighten that back up. And when I'm all done, I'm doing this for the camera right now. When I'm all done, I'll double tighten everything and make sure everything is good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna have to adjust the belt tension too because you can see it popped right on there. It's too loose now. And that's because I opened the pulley up. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and loosen my uh, bolts on this guy right here. Remember, we don't use a pulley or a sheave to adjust or tighten the belt. We use the motor brackets or whatever. This adjusts the speed of the exhaust fan, the amount of pull, okay? You also gotta be careful, I did speed up this exhaust fan and that is gonna negatively impact the building air balance, being that this fan is gonna run and it's gonna put a bigger negative air pressure on the building. So, after I get this running, I will be talking to the customer about coming back and doing a quick adjustment on their air balance. Got it back on and running, the belt's nice and tight like it should be, we'll come over and check our current draw and we're running at 2.25, 2.27. So that's much better. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Go ahead and put that thing back on. And then like I said, we're gonna talk to them about doing an air balance. Now to do an air balance, we would take their makeup air unit and potentially speed it up. But I have a feeling, uh, we haven't done a preventative maintenance here in a while, so I have a feeling we probably just need to go and tighten up all the belts on the ACs. Um, check to make sure that the outside air dampers are open because they pull a little bit of outside air from the ACs and then they pull a bunch of air. Usually it's like 80% or something like that from the makeup air and then they make up the other 20% in the ACs. So, um, But yes, I will talk to the customer about doing a balance. But other than that, I was not, uh, I decided not to change the, the drive pulley and I just changed the motor pulley. So, but yeah, everything's looking good. No more grinding noise. I'm gonna put it back together. Well, we had a service call on this one for an exhaust fan that wasn't working properly. Um, the dishwasher exhaust, basically. Okay, so I went out there and um, first off, you know, climbing through those ladders onto those uh, landings, you know, sometimes they just have them piled full of stuff and you just got to deal with it. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, you know, as I'm walking up to my restaurants, I've always got my eyes open and I noticed that grease trap on that first exhaust fan. Uh, this particular restaurant hasn't been doing preventative maintenances right now, so they probably haven't had the grease cleaners out there too. But I'm definitely going to point that out to management because that's very dangerous when those grease traps overflow. 
um, that could become a fire hazard. So that's not cool. Okay, so once I got to the exhaust fan, it was working, which was interesting. So I just made sure I went through everything, checking the power source to the fan. You guys heard me reasoning in my head, you know, going through everything. Okay, if this is going on, the unit did not have an overload contactor on it. That's also something that I'm recommending to the customer that we get put on there because three phase motors should have an overload protector on it, basically. But that one's just using a contactor. So that fan, along with two other fans, are controlled by that time clock. But the time clock was set up to never shut off. So we know the time clock wasn't the problem. It was always possible that the, the contactor's going bad. Because it's a three-phase contactor and there was nothing else going to it, I'm assuming it's just going to that exhaust fan. Um, but my money was on that the motor was just overheating and shutting off or something because of the bearing going bad inside of it. You know, you said you could hear the bearing sound. So went ahead and changed it. And while I was at it, I went ahead and sped up the exhaust fan. I put a bigger pulley on it, um, got the fan to pull some more air. But I'm also recommending to the customer that we go back in and do a preventative maintenance on the building, get all the other ACs tight, um, cleaned up. The filters are dirty. I did check those and the belts are loose. We can't do an air balance until we fix all those issues. So there's no point trying to speed up the makeup air until we get all the ACs running in tip top shape, the makeup air and all the other exhaust fans. Okay. Um, but anyways, I left the building, you know, um, operating as best as it could be. Um, obviously checking everything else too. I went to look at the duct work, uh, brought to the customer's attention that they need to get those curtains put back into the dishwasher. Um, and that's pretty much it guys. All right. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. Do me a favor, leave me some feedback. Another thing too, I really don't ask this very much, but I probably should more share these videos. If you guys like them, please share them on your Facebook feeds, share them with your friends. Let's help to grow the community and spread the knowledge, the little bit that I do have to share with everybody else. Okay. So just share them with anybody that you can think of, send them out an email blast, whatever you want to do. Okay. I'd really appreciate that. Um, uh, just to keep in mind that I do do live streams Monday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific time, work permitting, meaning that as long as I can get off work in time, I do live streams where I answer questions about the videos and then answer other people's questions. Um, check those out. I usually post links. Um, also, if you're watching till the end too, thank you very much. I also turned on channel memberships on my YouTube channel. That's a little bit different. It's kind of like a Patreon thing. Do not have to do it, but if it's something you guys are interested in, you're able to do it via through YouTube now where you just click a membership. There's different tiers. They pretty much all get the same thing. So it's just a matter of whether or not you're able to support in a different way. Um, check it out. Just look underneath the video right now. You should see the membership tab. And if it's something you're interested in, so be it. If not, I don't make these videos to make money. Okay. But the, the little bit of revenue that I do get from like the AdSense and from the Patreon um, donators and from, you know, potentially the channel memberships, they do help me out to go ahead and continue to create these. But anyways, thanks you guys so very much. And, uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Okay.